Hey, how's it going everybody? My name is Sockbot and today we are going to be doing some create together type of video. I haven't made a video exactly like this before where we really just sat down, I created and talked about things I was creating as I was creating them because that's normally what I do on stream. So uh, if you do enjoy that sort of thing, hopefully this more edited down version will be a little bit more your thing as opposed to the long form creation that we do on stream where it takes me five hours to get one thing done. But today we're going to be finishing up some things in my Halloween level. Uh, um, you may have seen it already in some previous videos, but uh, I started it back in June and <laughs> we finished quite a lot of it then actually, uh, but then things have been quite crazy. So today we're going to be uh, kind of heading over here to the cabin, which I also included in my dreams challenge video uh, where I submitted a room for the dreams event, El Hollow's Dreams. So feel free to check that out if you want to see that version of it. But today we're gonna be kind of modifying uh, with a little bit of the technique I thought about there and using it in this section to make this a more interesting platform segment. Also make it feel a little bit less uh, claustrophobic, I guess you could say. And then after that, we're going to head through this house here and over to the uh, lovely little ballroom to finish up the second hallway there, which will lead to the final objectives of this level. Now, if you haven't seen any of this before, um, I have talked about it in a few videos so far, and I'll do a whole like walkthrough once I actually do release the game, um, if I end up releasing it this uh, this year for for post Halloween dates? Will people still be interested in playing a Halloween game then? Well, regardless, I'll definitely release a version, if not the final version, uh, this year. But uh, yeah, if you do enjoy this sort of uh, create with me video, feel free to leave a like down below. Feel free to subscribe if you want to see more. But uh, otherwise, let's let's get right into it. Um, I will be describing things quite in depth as I talk about them and as I go through them. But if there are any specific things you see I've already made that you have questions on, feel free to leave in the comments down below um, and I'll end up answering your comment or maybe just talking about another video. All right, so you can tell right away all of the ambiance has disappeared and it's a lot less intimidating and quite boring in this, and I know that I've taken a lot of screenshots of this level to show people without realizing that I had studio mode on, so right now I am keeping on the studio lighting just so that we can see inside here. I'm going to try to put some interesting lighting around here eventually, but right now I think this is just my best goal. So today what we're going to be doing is sort of transforming this room. Um, if you'd seen the previous version of it, I kind of tried to use this little guy here, uh, Gustavo, as, I, as my boyfriend has dubbed him, um, as a platform uh, to sort of carry you between two places, but it doesn't really work in this sort of small enclosed space, so I'm going to turn him into a grab point. Um, and kind of say like when he when you walk in here, he's gonna tell you come on grab me grab on to me I'll help you um, and he'll help you over this gate So actually strike that we need to start right here So the chandelier as of right now is a grab point. There's a grab point right down here You can see it in this microchip And so what I'm gonna do now is grab all of the logic that I've made here Namely, there's a text displayer that shows you you can grab on to it um, And there's some trigger zones attached to a signal manipulator that will eventually cause the character to follow the uh, tag that's in here. And that is essentially how I make the character grab in this circumstance. So here we go, we got the microchip and now I'm gonna play around with it and try to figure out how the heck I'm supposed to make it work for this little guy here. So first off, I'm going to do the first modification that I have to for this section, and that's to completely modify the trigger zone for this. So for the other section, when I pulled out a trigger zone and kind of put it on this, I was trying to make the text displayer that shows you can hit R1 to grab um, a little bit more dynamic in the sense that I wanted it to only show uh, the first time when you like approached that area. I think I might change that up a little bit and make it a little bit more simple like this guy, but because this guy's not swinging back and forth, it's easier to just have a zone around him that says, if you're near him, the R1 uh, sort of symbol will show up to let you know you can grab him. All right, so I believe I've made the correct modifications. Let's give it a little test. So. Uh... Well, his mouth's a little bit derpy, and I think that's because one of the animations that was activated by the timeline he used to use is still active, but let's see if we can grab on to begin with. Yep, it looks like that's working. Looks a little weird. Uh, still a little bit choppy because I think two animations are playing at the same time, but there we go. I'd say that's uh, minimally acceptable for now. All right, so like 25-ish minutes later, I think we've kind of rebuilt things quite a bit. So the plan for this originally was for it to be pretty easy and simple, but that's normally the plan, isn't it? So everything we've had to do uh, to kind of transfer him over from the previous version, again, if this is making no sense, this is how it's supposed to look, minus all of the tech. Um, but our goal here was to kind of make this work 
so that the ghost, instead of working as a platform before, kind of works as a grab point. And we've done that. So now we can pop into play mode, possess our little friend here, and uh, he'll follow us around and keep an eye on us. And I'll give him a voice line later to make sure that you know that uh, he wants you to, to jump on him and uh, use him as a, a grab point. Is that weird? Does that sound weird? Probably sounds weird. But from here, you can do that. He stops rotating when it happens, all that sort of thing. Uh, still not sure if I want you to be able to do this, but uh, I guess those more difficult animations are for later on in this uh, in this series. But for right now, solved. Now let's make a timeline about him. So as always, we're going to grab a little timeline here, um, and then we're going to pop open that timeline and grab a keyframe. And for this keyframe, what we're going to do is we want to grab the whole thing. So we're going to grab this whole group here, just like that. And that's going to be the first keyframe. And then we're going to just copy that over here for a few seconds. We'll modify the times, but uh, I can leave that there for now. I'm going to grab this keyframe and once again, grab the whole group and move him up here. We have those two things. So we want to make sure that we stop uh, recording that keyframe. And let's just make it a simple there and back sort of thing. Sometimes I get to the point where I just say, screw it, let's use variables. All right, you know what? This is getting a little bit too complicated, and I'm not sure how much of this I'm going to skip, but uh, so long all of this difficult stuff. Let's make it a little bit easier. I couldn't quite figure out how to make the timeline move into reverse, and I'm not sure if that's entirely possible, so I would have to create a whole other timeline if I wanted to do that, and I'd started and thought, nah, that's a little bit much. So instead, we're going to do what pretty much everybody does, which is simplify this into the fact that when you grab him, it will start this timeline, it will play the whole timeline, and then it will restart if you're still grabbing it. Otherwise, um, it'll just go forward and back and that's all. And this sort of simplifies it, but it also stops it. So if uh, you do drop off halfway through this sort of journey, the Gustavo will just continue the journey without you. And uh, not ideal, but I suppose it can't be helped. And so one final part to make sure that this whole grab point doesn't get lost, we're going to take it and we're going to plonk it right inside this uh, this group that the timeline is referring to. And then just make sure it's in the right section here. There we go. All right, let's give it a test. Possess our little friend here. He's looking around, staring at us. And then we grab on, he should smile. Head right up here to drop off our lovely friend. Um, I'll have to create some cameras in here to make this a little bit less obvious, but oh, that's, that's weird. Okay, so why did he snap back like that? Oh. Yeah, this is just something that happens in dreams sometimes, and I'm not really sure why. Uh, let's... Let's fiddle around until we can figure out why this is happening. <laughs> what it should be doing is playing once. Now, I was hoping that I could have it so when you held on, it just kept going. That might not be the case. And again, it's just something you kind of got to deal with when you're creating within a system like this. So grab it once. He does the whole thing, goes back to the start, misses you. Grab him again. Can still get back up. Perfect. All right. Problem solved. We tried to make it a little too complicated, just, you know, to smooth things out a little bit, but this is pretty smooth, and I say it works quite well. Now, I may end up modifying this a little bit so he doesn't zoom so quickly up here, uh, but for right now, I'd say that's done. And now, we're going to work on the next section, which is right down here. Now, when you get to this section, these two shovels, I'll probably put on fire or something, just to let you know that they'll kill you, because uh, they do, in fact, kill you. Um, but, most importantly, I want to make sure that there is a sort of... Uh, let's say next little area here on second thought maybe i'll just put the star under here because that looks good hmm had to jump back into the uh other level here to grab a star all right there we go much better now let's see is that gonna glow like it should let's turn off the studio lighting yep it is perfect look at that beautiful star down there very enticing very beautiful so I'm going to just play through it real quick, make sure everything works. Great, we got a little guy down here. That actually provides a good amount of light. We'll have to have some more on top, but uh, brings you up onto this little platform. Again, one of the things we're going to do uh, at the end of the game, it's what I like to do anyways, is uh, work on camera angles. But for right now, I'd say it's playable. Drop on down here, run around to the star, and there we go. Success. All right, so next part of tonight. Oh gosh, it's getting pretty dark out here. Let me get some more light in here. All right, that that's that fixes the lighting, right? Fixes it enough? 
I think we're good. So next up, we're going to be working on this small section here, which I've sort of been on and off about, haven't really decided if I like it, but, uh, but I think I like it enough to try it. So I'm going to create another hallway here off of this side. So generally the flow of the level will be get the outside stars first and uh, by one of those, you'll figure out how to unlock this lovely hallway right here from the other section over here, which I will show um, in the future. And after that, you get to this section, you eventually light up all four candles to light up the room and, uh, well, get rid of the scary giant legs that uh, you can't see, so I only need the legs for it. Uh, basically, you can only see the feet during this level. And so once you light all four candles, then you will summon a star, but at the same time, there will be an indication that there is another star nearby, and that other star is going to be through this wall here. Um, and my original goal was just to create an interesting platform segment through here, but now what I want to do is I want to turn this into a giant spinning vortex of death uh, where the whole room is spinning and that's how you make it through it. Basically, you will walk along this path, um, which is the only safe path through this entire thing, and it will only become safe at certain times throughout that rotation. That sounds confusing. Hopefully we can finish it up today or at least get a basic idea in here uh, to show you what it's gonna be like. But to start, um, and that's, you know what, I think I'm gonna, I'm gonna limit it to just the start and then showing you the uh, next steps before I end the video because it's already quite long. The start is going to be, let's get this giant wall that's a false wall to move out of the area. So first, we'll create a keyframe. I already got a timeline up here. Um, grab a keyframe out of the animation section, plonk it down at the beginning of the timeline, just barely touch this wall to make this starting area, and then we're going to grab another keyframe and make sure precise mode is on, which it is. Great. And then we're going to sort of nudge this little guy out here, make sure it's totally clear of that wall and not in anything else. Looks good. Great. All right. That's keyframe number two. So it's gonna slide from its position out a little bit and then it's gonna slide over. And we want it to pause a little bit, so let's extend that keyframe by just a bit. And then grab one more keyframe for the final position, which will be off to the side. Actually, you know what, let's, instead of making a new one, Let's copy that keyframe just so we know exactly what position it moves from. And that's just a little tip. If you want to create a keyframe based on the last one, make sure to copy that over as opposed to grabbing a new one. And again, using precision mode so we can make sure we keep our corners all cornered. Uh, plonk that over there, probably right there, I think. And can you still see a little bit of it? Perfect. So that'll slide on over and uh, there you go. There's our new wall. Now let's just test that animation real quick and make sure we have on keep changes. And uh, go ahead and hit play. There you go, one, two. Perfect, that's exactly the kind of animation I wanted. Slow out and then quickly moving over. It looks exactly like anything you'd see in Harry Potter. Uh, well, maybe not quite as magical with all the stones turning, but it serves its purpose. And so another small tip here that uh, I use, not sure if it's probably the best one, but um, I think for me, for the most part, when I'm going through stuff like this, I struggle to sort of finish stuff because, well, for one, I have pretty intense ADD, but for another, um, I often get stuck on technology and will end up working for an hour and a half on a tech piece and feel like I've gotten nothing done. And so for right now, we're going to leave this whole section off. Um, and whenever we figure out how we're going to activate this, which will be in the near future, um, we'll turn it on from there. But for right now, I'm going to leave that off and I'm actually gonna leave the playhead over here so that we just have it at the end of its section. And so now I'm gonna clean this hallway up a little bit, make it a little bit less, uh, well, holy, <laughs> and then add our large uh, spherical, cylindrical, cylindrical tube of death because um, that's how this is gonna work. And so what I've decided to do here as we start to make this very large sphere, I'm going to create that sphere using these sections and doing so by taking one and then the other and then another and uh, using precision mode just to rotate them 15 degrees each time. Now you may be wondering why I didn't just try to do a copy and paste thing. And so we're gonna try it now um, and see if that would have worked because 
initially when I was going through this, I was like, we just need to be really careful here and make sure nothing moves too far. But at this point, I think if we take this and rotate it just right, there we go. So we're gonna grab that top section there, copy it, turn it 90 degrees, place it where we think the other corner will be. And then we're going to make as many copies as you would need to get to this point, which if we're going in 15 degree increments, that would be one, two, three, four, five, six, six full copies. And counting that, yep, looks like I'm right. So one, two, three, four, five, should bring us right there. And that actually might give us, see how it's coming in here? That might give us a clearer curve. So let's try to do that. Let's take out these really quick and kind of see the difference. See how it uh, copies. If it copies well, then we'll use that. If not, we can go back and undelete what we tried. And that should give us exactly what we need. Going to slowly let off on R2 right now until we get in the perfect spot. There we go. And then let's delete the duplicate here, which I think is that side. And there we go. We got that curved wall. Actually, that looks really good. And so now all we need to do is take this, uh, sorry, take all of these and just copy it and reverse it. And it should be perfect. I'm actually gonna grab that one too, um, because one of the things that I do to align things perfectly like this is sort of grab a block that I'm going to align it with. And then like when I do this, I'm gonna copy this whole thing, give it a swap to the other side. And then that final block that, although it's the same thing, uh, that I decided to copy will also let me place it directly on top of that. And then I can just delete one of the copies and there we go. We got half the dome done. All that's left is to align the bottom section, which is going to be done by literally just taking what we made and copying. You literally could have made this whole thing in probably half the time that I did. Um, but again, half of creating in uh, this game is trying to figure out what's the best way to do things. And most of the time, you're not gonna have the right idea on the first run. And so let's grab that little guy. And again, use these little guiding blocks that I'm going to just place directly over it. Make sure because we're using precision mode, don't see any of that blue uh, third axis there to screw up our uh, perfect placement. And there we go, we got this full circle here. And so that's how you're going to enter the circle of death. Um, or whatever we end up calling it once we're fully finished this. Now that I realize these are in different sections, I could have them rotate in different directions. And I might do that, but I think it might be a little bit too hard to plan for the player to uh, get to the next section at the right time. And uh, that would require a lot of planning on my part, but in addition to that, it would sort of complicate things. The player would have to look pretty far into the distance to plan where they need to go. And being that one of my biggest goals with game design is to make sure that my games are completable on the first try every single time, no matter what, to make sure that it's fair. And that's what I consider fair. And so if it would require the player to look really far into the distance um, and possibly mess up if they don't, um, and if they just go in with a normal amount of caution, I would prefer to make it a little bit simpler or a little bit more apparent as to what's gonna be going on. So yeah, we got our big spire of death. We're obviously gonna block this off on both sides and create another platform. Actually, I'll do that right now. Make another platform all the way over there so you can kind of see it in the distance. You know where you're trying to get. You just don't know how to get there. And uh, we'll attach this to another wall on this side, but that should be perfect for our spiral of death. Um, just a matter of grouping things, creating a room around it to make sure that there's not of this uh, like leaking light here. And uh, yeah, we'll have our next star. But for if you want to see that, let me know down in the comments below. I will be working on it and I will show it in a future video, whether or not it makes it into an exploratory video like this, where I spend a little more time explaining things. I guess that will be up to you guys if you like it or not. But uh, regardless, thanks so much for watching. I hope you enjoyed this very 
brief for you, but probably pretty long for me, uh, create-a-thon where I showed you a few different things I'm working on. And I hope you guys learned something because uh, gosh knows that's how I've learned things is by watching other creators create stuff. Um, and it's not even stuff that I've actually recreated. Like that grab point was not at all based on a video about grab points. It was based on a video about variables, which I then sort of learned how the signal manipulator worked. Um, and that worked itself into the original design of the grab point. So very interesting. Um, to watch things through this, at least it is for me. So if it is for you, I'm glad. Thanks so much for watching, guys. I'm running out of words because I feel like I've been talking for three hours, but I hope you're all doing well. I'll talk to you guys in the next video. But for now, goodbye, everybody. Mm -hmm.